I've been called out this afternoon to a customer's house to have a look at their immersion heater. The immersion heater doesn't seem to be working. However, before we carry out any of the work, we really need to carry out safe isolation. First thing we need to do when we carry out safe isolation is get permission of the homeowner or the customer to carry out the work which I've done. Um, the second one is identify the circuit that is needing to be worked on, which I've also done. I'll just show you. The circuit is this circuit here with the lead here that leads to the top, to the top of the immersion heater here. And then we need to locate where the fuse board is or the consumer unit and actually locate the actual circuit protective device. In this case, it's a Wilex rewirable fuse. So carrying out safe isolation on that is a little bit more tricky than carrying out safe isolation, say, on a circuit breaker, BS60898. Um, however, we, I'm gonna just go through how I would carry out safe isolation on this circuit. So just to recap, permission to carry out the work has been done. We have identified the circuit that it's going to be work, working on. Um, and now we're going to go and locate the fuse. So if you come down with me, we will locate the fuse together. So this is the Wilex rewirable fuse board. It's got immersion heater written on it. So that's where we're going to start before we carry out anything else. I'm not just uh, before we just pull this fuse out, we have to make sure that the circuit itself is not under load. I've made sure it's turned off and everything seems to be okay. So I'm just going to pull this fuse out. Okay. Fuse has come out, so 15 amp type. To go out safe isolation on this, now is what's to stop someone from coming along while I'm working on that and actually putting that fuse back in there. So this, in this case we're going to use this here. It's the, it's the, normally the fuse would go through there but in this case this one is blanked off. So we'll take this one out and I'll show you what we're going to do. So this is the one that's come out, as you can see, the fuse would normally go through there and then the circuit is potentially live. So what we're going to do is going to put this one in its place. If someone came along with one of these, they wouldn't be able to put this back in its place. That's in there now, just to have a look again. You can see it's there, and that's your fuse now, can't go back in there. Okay, the next thing at this stage now would, I'm going to keep hold of this fuse, I'm going to keep it in my pocket, and that's going to prevent, if I just left it up there, someone could come along and accidentally put it in. So by keeping it in my pocket, I know that the circuit itself should be um, should remain safe. The next thing at this stage to do of safe isolation would be to put signs up, warning notices, lock the cupboard, however it is. I actually know that the customer's not in the house and no one else is in the house apart from me, so I know that someone's not going to come along and um, accidentally turn this on. However, I've got one of these little IET safe isolation warning notices. It also talks about the stages of safe isolation on the back. I'm just going to leave that up there in front of the board so at least we have put warning notices up just to ensure that um that everything is safe okay done that now okay next stage then i'm going to undo these two screws and locate the the rear of this 
where the incoming line are neutral and the outgoing line are neutral are located. We need to prove that these are working. Now these can either be proved against a known source or we can use a proven unit. Unfortunately today my proven unit for the first time in about four years hasn't actually worked. So I won't be able to use that today. So what we will do is we'll go against a known source. Now above me is a light lighting point. I know it's working, I know it's live because the light itself is on. So I'm just going to unscrew the baton lamp holder and I'm just going to check to make sure that these are working correctly. I'm going to put this one onto the neutral first and then I'm going to put this onto the line. These colours should light up and indicate what to me whether the circuit is live or not. So we're going to go onto the neutral first and then onto the line and I am reading 243 volts so I know these are working. So the circuit is turned off. As you can see the, um, the space that we've got to work on isn't fantastic. However, it's, it's okay, we can manage like this. Okay, just gonna gently, very gently, I'm gonna just pull this forward. The test was carried out between line and neutral, line and CPC, and neutral and CPC to prove the circuit was dead. I'm gonna take my voltage indicators, my voltage testers, one more time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check to make sure they are still working correctly. I'm just so again I'm going to put this onto a known source or my proven unit. Unfortunately, like I said before, I haven't got my proven unit. So we're going to go against the known source which is this lighting circuit here. We're going to go onto the neutral first, then we're going to go onto the line. You can hear the beep. Again 243.8 volts this time. I think we're safe to work on this circuit. Immersion heater circuit is safe to work on.